Good evening and welcome everyone. My name is David Timiuk and I'm Division Principal of Falk Island Public Schools and it's my pleasure to welcome students and parents and staff to our high school information evening. The purpose of this evening is really one that is trying to capture what has gone on in our schools individually for many years. So many of our junior highs ran high school information evenings to invite parents and junior high students to come out and simply learn about high school programming. Uh, four years ago, we decided to consolidate uh, this into one evening for our whole school community, and it has been growing um, year to year, so it's fantastic to see so many of you out uh, tonight. This would be our largest group that we've had to date. Part of the presentation tonight is you will see that there's a list of open houses. We do have administration here, both uh, principals and assistant principals from all of our high schools in all of our communities. We do have nine uh, high schools in Elk Island Public Schools. And uh, once the meeting is completed, you may have noticed that when you come in, came in, there are posters uh, out in the front lobby area. If you have specific questions around a topic, we will have those areas manned by our high school administration. And we certainly encourage you to take the opportunity to uh, go and chat with them. Actual presentation uh, part tonight will be uh, 35 to 40 minutes long. We don't hand out uh, copies of the PowerPoint uh, because the PowerPoint will be posted on our website uh, tomorrow. So you can certainly uh, reference back to it if there was some information you saw here uh, tonight that uh, you're further interested in. We're also videotaping tonight's presentation and that will be posted on our website. And I do want to uh, thank, uh, in particular, Strathcona Christian uh, Secondary has uh, staff and students here uh, tonight who are helping out with the presentation. So, we will begin. Hello, I'm Karen Ramsey. I'm the assistant principal of Next Step Outreach High School. And I'm going to talk to you about how you're going to complete your high school diploma. So there's three things that can happen. You can get an Alberta high school diploma, a certificate of high school achievement, or a certificate of school completion. Most students finish high school in three years, and some take over, so four or five. Okay, I'm going to push the button and hope it's moving properly. So, certain classes are required for a high school diploma, uh, and certain classes are required for the Certificate of High School Achievement. Some grade 10 courses are prerequisites for more advanced senior high courses. So right now, when you're planning what courses to take in high school, I would really encourage you to think about what you like, what are your strengths, what are you curious about. Go to the websites, go to the NAEP website, go to McEwen, go to Concordia, right? Ask yourself, am I a hands-on learner? Please, when you go to the open houses, be curious. Because lots of the options that you'll see in the high schools are things that you're not exposed to in junior high. Most students obtain a high school diploma. So we're gonna talk about what a high school diploma, what do you need, young people? You need English 30-1 or 30-2, social studies 30-1 or 30-2, and we're the only province in the country that requires that for social, so if you don't like social, you can try to avoid minister. Math, you have to do 20-1, 20-2, or 20-3. And science, you can do science 20, 24, physics 20, chem 20, or biology 20. So what you will notice there is the math and the science at a grade 11 level, but for English and social, it must be at the grade 12 level to get a high school diploma. You all need physical education 10, career and life management, otherwise known as COM. And you need a combination, and I won't read them, you can see them up there, of any of those courses for a minimum of 10 credits and then 10 more credits at the 30 level. And that is all on this handy dandy piece of paper. So when the slide changes, don't panic, you should have it. Certificate of High School Achievement is a little bit different than a diploma. You need a minimum of 80 credits, including English 
20-2 or 30-4, math 10-3 or 20-4, science 14 or 20-4. Again, physical education, calm, and some CTS credits at the 30 level, there are five of them, and then what we call k and &E workplace practicum. Work experience, registered apprenticeship program, which is RAP, green certificate, or special projects, pardon me, at the 30 level that will give you five credits. This is um, the Alberta Certificate of High School Completion. The requirements for this are quite different than the last two. Most of these young people that get this are, have some cognitive development, either physical or some mental challenges. They're typically in one of the programs within the high school. So the requirements for these young people to get their high school completion are different. Again, I will not read through what is on there. You can do that and it's also on your sheet. They typically, though, are not receiving any credits within a core class. So you may ask, what is a credit? Welcome to the new year of high school. Typically, a core class is going to be five credits. Your non-core classes can be from six to, sometimes young people will get 11 or 12 credits within that block of time. One credit is achieved for 25 hours of instruction. To earn a credit, you must pass the course with the 50%, so that's a bit of a change from junior high. You can take the course as many times as you like, but you will only receive the credit once. You will always get the highest mark on your transcript. So course numbers. It's pretty easy in grade 10 because everything is 10-1, 10-2. When we go to grade 11, it becomes 20. And when we go to grade 12, it becomes 30. So the dash one, the dash two, the dash three, that's a specific route and you can't jump across these routes. So if you start in English 10-2, you cannot move to 20-1 for grade 11. That's why when you're coming out of junior high, those marks are looked at very closely by the people that are receiving you in the high schools. And we also have prerequisites now in high school, so you may be really keen to take Math 30-1 when you hit grade 10, but you got to go through Math 10C and then Math 20-1 first. So those are the prereqs, and it's usually, I mean, it's in a line linear order, so grade 10, 11, and grade 12. And I'm out of time. Good luck, everybody. Good evening. Thank you, Karen. My name is Rod Leatherdale. I'm principal of Vegarville Composite High School. I'm happy to be here. I will be speaking this evening about the Rutherford Scholarship Program. So, first off, as, as you're venturing into the world of high school, the world of post-secondary may not be on the radar yet, but we're here to tell you that it is something that needs to be a part of your plan. As you enter into high school, you're going to be looking at courses, you're going to be looking at, at, uh, at the route that you're going to take, but there are many different scholarships that are out there, many with very different uh, requirements as far as planning and, and, and applying. And the best person to talk to or one of the best resources that you'll have in your school is your school counselor. So what I'm going to speak about though is this specific one of the Rutherford Scholarship. The Rutherford Scholarship is an Alberta government program that provides up to $2,500 in scholarship funding to students. What you need to know is this starts in grade 10. As you can see on the slide, that there are amounts that are allocated depending on the grade. So there's money available in grade 10, there's money available in grade 11, and there's money available in grade 12. And it's cumulative. So when you're done and you go to apply, that that money will be available for you to put towards post-secondary at the end of high school. So a couple of key things. One is the criteria that this is based on is not just core academic courses. Some people have, some scholarships are, and some people might be under the impression that these are. I'm not gonna go through the criteria, but you need to know there are three different areas that these scholarships are based on, and they work out your best average based on those courses, and that's what is applied to the average, okay? 
the second is that this is a non-competitive scholarship. If you qualify, then you get the scholarship. It's not the first hundred or the first thousand. If you qualify, then the money does come to you. Okay? And the third, I think this is most important, this is free money. This is one of the easiest scholarships you'll get. If you make the grade, if you have the average, if you go through the courses, then the money will be there. Okay? Uh, there are more details. Uh, I will be available after the presentation with some more detailed information along with my colleague, Grant Fittis, Assistant Principal from Salisbury High School, outside the auditorium. Thank you. enter high school, they'll be further challenged academically. This is no different when it comes to English language arts, where students will have three streaming options, 10-1, 10-2, and 10-4. English 10-4 is part of the Knowledge and Employability Program, which is part of earning a high school certificate, but not a high school diploma. English 10-1 focuses on critical analysis and responding to a variety of liter literature through abstract and symbolic connections. By completing English Language Arts 10, uh, to 30-1, students can use this course to enroll in almost any post-secondary institution, but it is primarily used for university as long as the minimum entrance mark is obtained. Entry requirements are set by each post-secondary institution individually. English 10-2 focuses on personal response and works on practical communication skills. It encourages students to make connections to texts by drawing on their personal experiences and feelings. By completing English through to 30-2, students will be able to access programs in most trade schools, some colleges, but virtually none at the university level. As you can see, there is different paths for students to take in order to complete English language arts through to the third level in order to graduate. This means that students can change streams to find the best place to be successful in high school and beyond. Dash 1, 
Those are your pre-calculus courses and can lead, if you so choose, to Math 31, which is calculus. That stream is working towards engineering, business, math, sciences at the university or college level. The Dash 2 program goes with Math 20-2 and then Math 30-2. It's not calculus based and it actually works for entrance into post-secondary schools, including universities, into things like nursing, arts and humanities, elementary education. The Math 10C at this point is the one that you need to know if you're going to do 10C or 10-3. Certainly as you progress through to grade 12, you need to make that decision. Are you going to go to the Math 30-1, 30-2 options? When you go for the Dash 1, you can move it to Dash 2. Going from the Dash 2 to the Dash 1 is something that you can only do once you hit the 30 level. And that's math. I'll be at outside as well if you have more questions. And then came science. Yeah. I'm Kathy Allen. I'm the principal of Southbury Composite High. And just stop for a second right now. Lots of these decisions, you should be having conversation with your grade 9 teachers. So if all of this stuff tonight that's coming your way and you're just, oh my gosh, this is so much, have that conversation with your teacher to go, here's where my mark is right now. Um, how much effort have I been putting in? Um, what is the best path for me to go through? There are multiple ways to do high school. Multiple. And your plans will change. And so this is not tonight to be going confusing you, but hopefully it's starting to make you curious about what is high school going to be like. Science is a requirement for graduation. In grade 10, you're going to be choosing between Science 10 and Science 14. Science 14 would be for students who did not make 50% in grade 9. It's not closing a door but it's going to help you bridge if you're looking at going on to a 30 level science. So it's very important how you're going to shift your thinking in high school and that's kind of fun because it's part of growing up. When you are finished science 10, there will be again several options for you. So on the chart that you can see, you can go to biology 20, chemistry 20, physics 20 or science 20. Be very mindful of Science 20. It is a general course, it has rigor, it is a challenging course, but it does allow you to get into a number of different faculties. So being mindful of what it is that you want to do as a career and in your professional life. Those are things that will come as you're going through grade 11 and grade 12. But for right now, your decision is really probably going to be around 14 and 10. And so you've got half a year left to kick it up a bit if you're really wanting to be in Science 10. Science 10 will be a little bit off chemistry, biology, physics, and environmental science. I will be at the table with my colleague Chair Moore from Beth Facey High School and we would be happy to help you with any questions around science because we're both science teachers. gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. My name is Amit Valley, and I'm the principal at Lamont High School. It's my pleasure to spend a few minutes chatting with you about social studies programming at the high school level. The social studies flowchart is fairly straightforward, as you can see on the slide behind me. As a general statement, the greatest difference between social studies dash one and dash two streams is that a dash one stream can be expect, uh, excuse me, a dash one student can expect a more rigorous experience as far as the depth in which the material is explored and students will be expected to communicate their knowledge and understanding with greater intensity. In the Dash 2 stream, similar concepts are explored, however, with more emphasis on the individual as opposed to the greater society. Um, a few highlights I wanted to touch on as far as social studies. First off, as a former social teacher, I'm obliged to tell you that social studies is the most important and most interesting subject matter you will take. <laughs> In order to receive a high school diploma, all students must complete social studies at the 30 level. 
Transition points from Dash 1 and Dash 2 are available at the end of each course. However, as a rule of thumb, a student who enters at the Dash 2 stream would be encouraged to complete the, the stream all the way through to 30 Dash 2 before trying 30 Dash 1. One key note that I wanted to point out for many of our parents in the audience, um, the big difference with social, social studies today is that when we went through, the expectation was that if you wanted to go on to university, you had to take that higher level, that social 30 as opposed to social 33. Many university programs, both secondary and general, accept 30-2 now. So it's very important that you know what you want to do and take the appropriate course. So I, I do, again, like what my colleagues have shared, take the time to investigate the program that you're interested in and then work backwards from there. Social studies 10-4 and 20-4 are work-based programs that can be used as far as obtaining a, uh, a K&E certificate of completion. A major component of the K&E program is real, real world experience and the social studies program is designed to complement this goal. More emphasis in this program is placed upon learning about responsible citizenship in Canada. One last piece I wanted to touch on before I move on to my colleague is to talk about Aboriginal Studies 10, 20, and 30. Uh, Aboriginal Studies 10, 20, and 30 is, has a focus on truth and re reconciliation, and as such, many of our high schools have begun offering this program. This program offers students the opportunity to gain greater understanding of the culture and complexity involved in the current political climate. Recently, many post-secondary institutions have begun to recognize Aboriginal Studies as a potential replacement for Social Studies when considering admissible courses. Please note, though, that this is not a separate that this is a separate stream of courses and would be taken separately from Social Studies. Uh, this would be a good choice for students who are interested in learning more about our First Nations, Métis, and Inuit populations. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to visit me at the Social Studies table outside. Thank you. My name is Deanne Bennett, and I'm the assistant principal at Fort Saskatchewan High School. Uh, and I'm here to talk to you about fine arts. So we're getting into the option classes. So with Elk Island Public, we offer art at the 10, 20, and 30 level, choral music, dance, drama, general music, instrumental music, musical theater, and technical theater. All of these options at the 30 level can allow you to get into many of the faculties at the university. So when we look at the Faculty of Arts, Business, Education, Fine Arts, Forestry, Kinesiology, Native Studies, Nursing, and some, and some sciences, um, you can actually use your 30 level in any of these. So the drama, the art. So if you're quite talented in that, that can be a placeholder for something that you might not be as strong at. So if you can get a you know, high 80 or 90 in that, you can use that to go towards your GPA to enter university. I am Darby Hansen, and I am one of the assistant principals at our Drawson Junior Senior High School. Our Drawson Junior Senior High is home to Elk Island Public Schools Senior High French Immersion Program. It's also one of the sites of the Junior High French Immersion Program, um, and the second site is at Shore Heights. There are many excellent opportunities in second languages. A second language component has many benefits, including better job prospects with being bilingual, better brain health, and opening up to a world of new opportunities through travel. Second languages also improve first language skills and give a greater global understanding of the world in which we live by experiencing new cultures. As you can see from the slide, many of our high schools offer Spanish, German, and French second language courses. Students are able to use their 30 level credits in these courses to achieve their graduation requirements towards Alexander Rutherford scholarships and also for entrance into many post-secondary programs. <laughs> like was mentioned with the fine arts, you can often replace some other subject areas with the mark from second languages, so it can be very helpful to boost your overall average. I hope you will consider adding a second language to your high school path. Thank you. Hello, my name is Brandon Salz and I am assistant principal at Salisbury Compton High School. So for phys ed, 
main thing is it's that gatekeeper again, because Z10 is the one class that every single person has to get. There's other options that you can see, personal fitness, sports, medicine, yoga, wellness. These are all option classes you can take in the physical activity realm, but they do not count as that gatekeeper. Uh, they can be taken instead, or not instead of, but concurrently or along with. Uh, so that's the big difference with phys ed. We need to get that phys ed 10 out of the way. Athletics. There's a lot of similarities from athletics in junior high to athletics in high school. First one, you have a plethora of sports to choose from. There will be teams that involve cuts and tryouts. There will be teams that there are no cuts and everyone that shows up makes the team. And as an uh, extracurricular activity, it does come with certain fees associated with playing those sports. The biggest difference with high school is just in case your educational choices or life circumstances change, if you have to move into Edmonton during your high school career, there's a little bit of a process that we do have to go through a formal process in making a transfer happen. But other than that, pretty much everything is just like junior high. Greetings. My name is Wes Berta, Assistant Principal at Strathcona Christian Academy Secondary. Off-campus education is like it sounds. Education occurs outside of the regular school day. It's offered at our high schools in Elk Island and as well at Next Step. This allows students to explore pathways and gain work experience that are outside the school walls. Work can be paid or sometimes it's voluntary as well. And so the students can be earning credits and money at the same time. It can begin any time after the summer or after the school year completed in grade 9, so during the summer, except for the RAP program, which is the Registered Apprenticeship Program. Before a student can participate in a course that is off campus, they must have taken a safety course, and that's HCS, which is a work safety course 3000. Uh, they can complete that within the school or it can be done online as well. Students can earn credits towards their high school diploma at the rate of one credit for each 25 hours of documented work. Work experience. So here's where the students can be off on a work site uh, between the hours of 7 to 10, or perhaps with uh, extended hours can be available if its arrangements have been made. And they can work a minimum of 75 hours, that would give them their three credits, and get experience and opportunity. And one of the real important things of this is getting something on their resume, and so they can have a work reference, and that would be an applicable thing to put on their resume. The Registered Apprenticeship Program, and so this is where there are approximately 50 trades under the supervision, and they would be under the supervision of a journey person. And so the student would be working uh, on a job site uh, somewhere under, underneath their supervision. They could earn up to 40 credits with the RAP program. So you can see that's a significant part of their 100 or 80, depending on the program that they're on. And so that's approximately 1,000 hours of work. And they would record those hours in the blue book that they would receive from their journeyman, instructions on how to do that. And the beauty of that is then that can transfer over to their apprenticeship program, which they continue on at one of the technical institutes in Alberta, or perhaps outside our province as well. Again, there's lots of assistance here, and some of that comes from Careers the Next Generation organization. And they can help a student find a job if they don't know of a journey person or a place of employment then Careers Next Generation can help with that process, as well as the off-campus educator that's within the high school or next step. I uh, just want to mention that there is an Elk Island hosted uh, registered apprenticeship information night, and that's at Salisbury High on February 28th from 6.30 till 8.30. So if you have more questions about off-campus education that we can't answer for you tonight, then you can definitely attend that event. The Green Certificate Program, a wonderful program for those interested in specifically areas of agriculture. And in this case, they're going to be working with a mentor providing training on a farm or a recreational equestrian center, uh, ranging from a cow-calf operation, a field crop, bees, swine, dairy, and horses. It's a program that a lot of people don't realize is available. And even if you don't have a farm connection, uh, there are stables and equestrian centers around the Shure Park area. A student could work there with horses or uh, in some other manner and uh, receive credit. And again, they can get great experience for their resume, credits up to 16, 
and then a green certificate, agricultural technician cert certification from Alberta Agriculture, and that can apply towards post-secondary education or employment. The last two things I'll mention, first of all, the military work experience, and uh, this is specifically for students who are members of the reserves, and so if you would qualify for that, you can be part of this work experience program, and you can gain up to 55 credits in this, and gain some great experience. And finally, health internship, open to grade 11 students, an opportunity to explore over 200 health occupations through a summer internship at local hospitals, care centers, and clinics. And we had a couple of our students do this last year. It was a wonderful experience for them. Uh, these students can earn an honorarium, school credit, and valuable experience in the health services field uh, in an area of their interest. And if you want more information about that, your off-campus educator coordinator in the high schools or Next Step could help you with those questions. And John Elzinga and myself will be at the booth at the back to answer any questions that we can for you later. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Barclay Spady. I'm the very proud principal at Beth AC High School. So thank you for coming tonight. Lots of really good information. And so it'll seem a little overwhelming at moments, but afterwards will be lots of time to really dig in and ask lots of questions, lots of experience, and, and lots of folks that are here to help you. I get kind of the funsy part. I get to talk about the CTS stuff or the career and technology studies. So you can see a bit of a list of some <coughs> CTS courses. This is um, just a, a, a teaser into the areas. There are many, many other courses that schools will offer. And so there is commonality between schools in, in the courses they offer. However, the names might be slightly different, but again, uh, every school will offer a good variety of these courses. Some other ones that aren't listed there, are some of the business courses, so legal studies, marketing, tourism, financial management. Um, other courses aren't listed, forestry, uh, horticulture. All the leadership courses that schools offer are also CTS. So there's a real uh, diversity um, of courses that exist, okay? Now the great thing about CTS is you get one credit for every sort of unit of completion. So it will look a little different on your grade book and your power school when you get into high school that it'll say uh, sports med, but then all the individual credits will be listed below, okay? So the, the advantage to CTS is if you work really hard, you're really keen, you can uh, progress through the course maybe a little bit quicker, and so you may get more than five credits. So you could get seven or potentially even eight credits. Likewise, if you're maybe struggling a little bit with the material, you can still get achieve three or four credits instead of a pass or fail for all the credits. Okay, so there's an advantage that way. Uh, the other thing is your CTS credits can be utilized for the Alexander Rutherford Scholarship. So I would highly encourage folks to continue with your CTS courses at the 10, 20, and 30 level, because again, you can really use those uh, to tie into your average. So if you really love an area of focus and you're doing quite well, and you get a 90 in that area, well, then that can elevate your average on Rutherford scholarships, okay? So I would highly encourage you to continue on that. The other thing, so CTS areas, uh, some of them you could take for 10 credits. So you could take cosmetology, for example, all morning long, especially by the time you get into grade 11 and grade 12, or construction, or mechanics, or welding, or those areas. Because we know flat out that these CTS options and these CTS courses are sometimes the only reason some kids have the energy to get up in the morning and come to school, because they really love the hands-on piece. All these CTS courses are practical, hands-on courses. So you don't, you know, you're not doing theory textbook stuff like you do maybe in some other courses. You're working hands-on, so you're building stuff, you're creating stuff, uh, you're doing all those things. So that's the, really the most wonderful part of uh, the CTS program. So the idea being in junior high, you touched on a bunch of different things and maybe rotated through courses. When you get to high school, you're gonna focus in a little bit more. So you get to hopefully have an area of interest, you zero in on that, and that might be a career pathway. Uh, if you have questions about the CTS stuff, I'll be outside gladly chat with you all night about the CTS stuff. It's a passion of mine, and, uh, and 
look forward to the conversations. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Denise Sharpno. I'm an assistant principal with Next Step, and uh, I'm here to talk to you about alternate programs. So the division has a number of alternate programming. All of the programs still follow the Alberta education curriculum and students meet the requirements for an high, Alberta High School Diploma or a Certificate of High School Achievement depending on uh, which of the alternate programs they're looking at. One thing to note is that not every alternate program is offered at every high school. So the first one is French Immersion and students have an opportunity in the French Immersion program to do some of their core subjects uh, in French. So uh, they're French language arts, social studies, math, and one of the sciences. Uh, the next three programs on that list, the Advanced Placement Honors and International Baccalaureate programs, those um, are, are alternate programs that offer something different to students who enjoy challenging academic environments and they want to delve deeper into different subject areas. So the first one, um, Advanced Placement, is known as the AP program. Students delve further into content and may have to complete additional AP curriculum if the course differs from um, the Alberta Education curriculum. And students take AP exams uh, at the end of grade 12. The Honors program offers additional activities and materials in core subjects to encourage students to explore subjects to a deeper and broader level. And the International Baccalaureate program, also known as the IB program, it offers a rigorous approach to learning in grades 11 and 12, and it's for academically motivated students using both the Alberta um, Ed curriculum and the IB curriculum. The program promotes community involvement, intellectual creativity, in order to develop intercultural understanding and respect. Um, so there are three other alternate programs in the division. The first one that we see there uh, is Next Step. So Next Step offers programming for students whose needs are not met in traditional schools. Um, they offer self-directed learning with teacher support, flexible attendance, individualized programming to meet the, the individual student's needs. Uh, for example, students can speed up or slow down the pace of their courses. There are campuses for Next Step in Vegreville, Fort Saskatchewan, and in Shorty Park. Uh, the division, the next one is the summer school program that the division offers in July. This helps students free up time in their timetable during the regular school year um, for additional options and to maybe explore some of those uh, very demanding uh, academic uh, alternate programs. So for students who are entering grade 10 in September, they are eligible to take summer school. They can take calm, Phys Ed 10, or um, a combination course called Extreme Calm. Uh, there is also an extreme filmmaking course that is available for students going from grade 9 to grade 10, and it's a, a credit course as well. Um, all of the classes are offered with a traditional classroom instruction, except for the Extreme Calm course, and um, it, it's out at the Wilderness Center. And then there is also self-directed Calm, so students can complete um, all the work for Calm off campus, which is great if they they can determine their own pace uh, or if you're traveling. So for students in grades 11 and 12 um, at summer school, there are other academic courses, but this is, there's a video to show just to show you what summer school looks. Like.
Christian programming. This is a Christ-centered education uh, with leadership development, and the biblical worldview is infused throughout the curriculum in all subject areas. So remember that not all schools offer all of the alternate programs, but please come to our table after the presentation if you're interested in hearing more about any of these, and we'll be able to help you out. Outreach in Port Saskatchewan Church Park and Vigorville. We're a partnership school, so we work with all of the schools that are in that area. Um, and my job here is to talk about my pass. So, in about two years, you're all going to pass it. And you're all going to say, I can't remember what I took in grade 10. Or I took that course in summer school and I can't remember what it was. How am I going to look that up? And I forgot my password and I've transferred schools and I've come back. How do I find out all of my information? That's what this is. This is my pass. Alberta Education has created a site for you that tracks everything you're going to do from your first course out of grade 9 all the way to grade 12. You can print your diploma examinations, which is really important if you're ending up trying to get into like one of the universities and you're going to 87 and you got to check your diploma and you have an 85 and you got to come back the next step to upgrade. It's a great thing. Uh, you can order all your high school transcripts, so when you are prepping in grade 11 and grade 12 and you need to send your transcripts to all the colleges, universities, or trade schools that you're going to be going to, this is the spot that you're going to be going to and doing that. If you're going to be taking diploma exams in alternate centers, lots of students take one, two, or take two tries at certain exams. If you're taking a second try, you have to actually uh, register yourself and say, I'm going to go to Sal and write it. I'm going to go to Bev Face and write it. I'm going to go to Next Step and write it. So you do have a little bit of choice. You can even go downtown Edmonton and write that second exam. You can do it that way as well. It is a good way to check your personal information. It's always really good for students to, and parents to go and check your personal information, make sure everything is correct. I know a lot of CRA letters, which is the Canadian Revenue Service, asks for certain types of things. I found out that you can actually go into onto, uh, the MyPass and actually get those letters if you need them done as well. A DAR is probably the most important thing you're going to need as you finish grade 11 and halfway through grade 12. It's the one that will let you take a look at every single course that you've taken. Some of you will take 30 CTS courses. Some of you will have your International Baccalaureate. And if you have that, that certificate will also be inside of MyPass. If you finish something in advanced placement, that will also be in MyPass. And all of those things need to go to your post-secondary institution they're all ordered in the one spot. And lastly, for all the parents, there is a partner parent portal so that you can actually help your child track their progress to make sure that they are going to get done at the end of grade 12. So please, please go on, come and give a uh, chat with me. Uh, it's got an excellent video on how to log in. It's a little tricky to begin with, but at the end of the day, it's, it's well worth your time to get onto. Good evening, my name is John Elsinga, I'm the principal at Strathmore Christian Secondary School, and just thanks for coming out everyone, it's great to see uh, such a large crowd. Now that you've heard all this information, you might be wanting to go check out a few individual high schools uh, specifically, and so you can see the open house dates on the screen behind me. Feel free to go to those events, check out uh, the schools, see what high school life might be like uh, in some of those schools, meet some staff. And all the principals uh, from those schools are here tonight, so feel free to come and ask us uh, any details about those events as well, too. If you decide you want to attend a non-designated school, you must indicate that on the online registration system that's coming up here February 1 to 28. So make sure that you select that non-designated school if you want to attend that. Uh, acceptance into that non-designated school is based upon space, and you'll hear back from that non-designated school by mid-March as to whether or not uh, that school can accommodate your request uh, regarding the outcome of your registration. And with that, that concludes the formal part of our night. Uh, again, there's a whole bunch of booths out there. You'll see posters on the walls with the specific topics. So if there's a particular topic that you have a question about, come see one of us administrators. We wish you all the best in your high school decisions. We're here to help support you, help answer your questions, and drive safe tonight. Thank you very much.